Breathing accompanies us both during wakefulness and sleep. We all know that we can survive for some time without food, a few days without water, but only a few minutes without breathing. Despite this, many people are not aware of how crucial proper breathing is for our mental and physical health and for our performance. Breathing is unique among the functions of our body and brain because it lies at the boundary of our conscious and subconscious behavior. At any moment, we can consciously take control of how we breathe, which is an extraordinary feature of our brain. By changing our breathing pattern, we can quickly influence what our brain is capable of. For example, during inhalation, we are better at learning and remembering information than during exhalation. Breathing is also crucial for our mental and physical work. Breathing is not just a process necessary for life, but also a tool that we can use to improve our health, performance, and quality of life. Thanks to today's training, you will learn how to maximize this potential. When you're near sea level, the air is quite dense, which means there's a lot of oxygen in it. But as we climb to higher altitudes, the air becomes thinner, meaning there's less oxygen to breathe in. This is why we may experience difficulty breathing at high altitudes. This phenomenon is known as altitude hypoxia and can lead to many unpleasant symptoms such as dizziness, nausea, loss of appetite, headaches, and difficulty breathing. In extreme cases, it can lead to serious conditions such as pulmonary edema or brain swelling. However, the body has the ability to adapt to these conditions through a process called acclimatization. Acclimatization is the way the body adjusts to the reduced amount of oxygen at high altitudes. As part of this process, the body begins to produce more red blood cells, which are responsible for transporting oxygen to different parts of the body. Additionally, the body also begins to produce more hemoglobin, a protein that helps red blood cells carry oxygen. These changes help the body cope better with the lesser amount of available oxygen. However, acclimatization is not an instantaneous process. It can take from a few days to a few weeks, depending on individual physical condition and the altitude you are at. Therefore, it's important to give yourself time to adjust to the new conditions before undertaking any intense physical activities at high altitudes. It's worth noting that at high altitudes, despite the reduced amount of available oxygen, we still need to maintain an appropriate level of carbon dioxide in our body. As we discussed earlier, carbon dioxide is key to the breathing process as it helps to release oxygen from hemoglobin. However, at high altitudes, the body's natural reaction is to speed up breathing, which leads to the excretion of more carbon dioxide. This phenomenon, known as hyperventilation, can lead to a condition called hypocapnia, or too low a level of carbon dioxide in the blood. To prevent this, the body introduces a mechanism called periodic breathing. This is a cycle where the breath becomes accelerated, then slows down, allowing the body to maintain an appropriate level of carbon dioxide. We know that our breathing affects the excitability of the brain and how excessive hyperventilation can impact our cognitive abilities. Let's now focus on the optimal breathing pattern and how it can affect our health and brain functions. The first thing to remember is that proper breathing should take place through the nose. The nose provides natural resistance, which forces us to take a deeper breath, allowing us to deliver more oxygen to our body. Above all, longer exhalations help maintain the right balance of carbon dioxide in our system. This knowledge is essential for maintaining optimal brain excitability. The second key issue is the pauses between breaths. Although we have a brain center, the so-called pre-Botzinger complex, which controls our inhalation and exhalation, it does not have direct control over the pauses between breaths. It is we, as conscious beings, who must apply self-control and the ability to pay attention to our breaths to optimize this aspect of our breathing. Understanding and practicing the correct breathing pattern has a powerful impact on our ability to focus, learn, and process information, as well as on overall well-being and health. It can also help reduce stress and anxiety, which are often associated with overbreathing or hyperventilation. The vast majority of breathing techniques involve the exhalation being longer and more intense than the inhalation. Of course, some practices, such as the Wim Hof breath, involve alternating intense inhalation and exhalation, 
but the principle here is that the exhalation is longer and more intense than the inhalation. This is reminiscent of the principle of operation of a mechanism in a mechanical watch, which ensures the smooth operation of the watch regardless of changes in the environment. Similarly, our respiratory system works, regardless of the intensity of breathing, it always strives to make exhalation longer and deeper than inhalation. That's why understanding this principle is so important, as it allows for effective manipulation of our stress and emotions. If we apply this knowledge in practice, we can influence our emotional state by controlling our breath. For example, if we are stressed and want to calm down, we should focus on lengthening and deepening our exhalation. In this way, we will be able to slow down our heart rate and put our body in a state of relaxation. On the other hand, if we are sleepy or feel sluggish, we should focus on intense and long inhalation. In this way, we will speed up our heart rate, increase our alertness, and stimulate our body to action. Additionally, it is important to understand that it is not just about the length of exhalation compared to inhalation, but also about the force with which we do it. So if we want to calm down, we should exhale longer and more intensely, and if we want to stimulate, we should inhale longer and more intensely. In conclusion, understanding the principle that exhalation is longer and more intense than inhalation allows us to effectively manipulate our stress level and emotions through control of our breath. That's why breathing techniques, like the ones we discussed today, are so important for our health and well-being. Most of us inhale actively, but exhale passively. We let the air escape from us spontaneously, at any rate. This is a mistake. To gain full control over our breath, we need to learn to exhale actively. That is, we need to actively relax the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles of the chest during exhalation. In this way, we can quickly take control of our heart rate. If you feel that your heart is racing too much, you can use the technique of long, active exhalation. This will allow for a slowing of the heart rate. This technique is especially useful for people with strong interoceptive awareness, who can easily sense what is happening in their body. But it's not just the heart rate that can be controlled by the breath. Let's now consider something that each of us has experienced at least once in our life, hiccups. Hiccups are the result of a spasm of the diaphragm nerve, which emanates from the cervical region. This is usually an unpleasant, and sometimes even painful experience. But fortunately, by understanding what causes hiccups, we can learn a simple way to stop them. You've probably tried various methods, such as breathing into a bag or drinking water. Although these techniques can sometimes bring relief, there is a more effective way. All you have to do is take three breaths in a row, regardless of how short they may be, then hold your breath for about 15 to 20 seconds and slowly exhale. This approach leads to overstimulation of the diaphragm nerve, which later results in its hyperpolarization and inability to reactivate for some time. Another technique is known as cyclic hyperventilation. It involves performing about 25 quick, deep breaths through the nose, followed by a passive or active exhalation, usually through the mouth. This method significantly increases the level of autonomic arousal, releasing adrenaline from the adrenal glands and helping us cope better with stress. Remember, control over breathing is not just about controlling heart rate or eliminating hiccups. It is a powerful tool that will allow us to improve our well-being, reduce stress, and improve overall quality of life. Our body and brain are constructed in such a way that during inhalation we are more alert and quick to respond. During exhalation, on the contrary, we are more in a state of relaxation and our response is somewhat slowed down. This may seem like a small detail, but when we consider complicated situations that require quick decisions or when we suddenly see a threat, these milliseconds can really matter. For example, Formula One drivers or fighter pilots are usually trained to inhale in situations requiring lightning-fast reaction. This reflex is then automatically triggered in crisis situations. Understanding how breathing affects our alertness and response to the environment is not just a curiosity, but also the key to developing skills that will help us better cope with stress, concentration, and emotional matters. Another aspect to consider is breathing during sleep. 
research shows that different sleep stages are associated with different breathing patterns. During REM sleep, when we usually have the most intense dreams, our breathing becomes irregular and accelerates, while during deep sleep we breathe slowly and regularly. Understanding breathing patterns during sleep can help us better understand how our brain works during different sleep stages. In addition, regular, deep breathing can help us enter a state of relaxation, which can aid in falling asleep. These are just a few of the many ways in which breathing affects our brain and body. As you can see, this is a much more complex and fascinating topic than it might seem at first glance. That's why I encourage everyone to continue exploring this topic and experiencing the impact of different breathing techniques on various aspects of our lives. Remember, unless you are speaking, eating, exercising, or performing another activity that requires a change in breathing pattern, we should strive to breathe through the nose, not the mouth. This is related to the increased resistance of breathing through the nose, which we have already discussed. This increase allows more, not less, to pump the lungs. In addition, breathing through the nose warms and humidifies the air that gets into our lungs, which is more beneficial for lung health than breathing through the mouth. Hard mouth breathing, or simply mouth breathing, can be quite harmful to some of the lung's respiratory functions. It should be remembered that this does not mean that we should not breathe heavily through the mouth while running, sprinting or intense physical effort. However, we do not want mouth breathing to become our constant pattern. The best breathing pattern is nasal breathing. Another aspect of nasal breathing that is very beneficial is the fact that nitric oxide is produced in the nasal passages. This is a gas that can cause relaxation of the smooth muscles, which are associated not only with the blood vessels of the nose, but also the brain and all tissues of our body. Therefore, nasal breathing is great when we want to alleviate nasal congestion. When the nose is congested, most people breathe through the mouth. However, it turns out that nasal breathing allows for the expansion of blood vessels, greater blood flow, expansion of the nasal passages, and delivery of nitric oxide to all tissues of our body. This in turn enables better delivery of nutrients and removal of carbon dioxide and other waste products from tissues. Nasal breathing also affects our external appearance. When people breathe through the mouth, there is observed elongation of the jaw, drooping of the eyelids, and changes in the jaw structure that are not aesthetically beneficial. Fortunately, when people start breathing through the nose, very beneficial changes occur, such as raising the eyebrows, highlighting the cheekbones, improving the structure of the jaws and teeth. Thank you for your attention. This film is co-financed by the European Union.